don't break from European forests. And I'm gonna show you how you can set up your party system which you just rented from your uh, local liquor store. So basically how you're gonna get it, you're gonna get milk crack like that, the unit sitting inside, there'll be coupling already with two lines, and I can see down here there's a little drip tray which you're gonna put into the machine. So I'll just take it out. I already have one in here already sitting and chilling. So I'll just put this one on just sideways. You will see it more closely. So with the, in regards of the cake couplings, this is S type, would be used for all our beers. Uh, there's a few other types. There's uh, flesh style or A type, which uh, basically just slides on. I'll show you everything later on. But uh, that's two major ones which we're gonna use. So basically, we'll unpack the unit, make sure that uh, we've got electricity somewhere enclosed, and we'll start a connection with the cables. Always, there's, it says on the left it says air, and on the right it says a beer. So basically, what we're gonna do, always stop one. It's a beer. There's a thicker hose, and we're gonna just slide it in, and it's inside. The thinner one, it's a gas, and we're just gonna slide it in. Beauty. It would have worked the other way, so it, you can't swap the cables actually. So because there's a thicker, uh, there's a bigger hole, there's a smaller hole. There's the S-type coupling, ready to go. And I'll show you how to plug it to the cake. I'll have a plastic cake in here. Uh, there are option of the stainless steel cakes. I've got one just sitting here. So I'm gonna have a look. This is standard 30 liter cakes. Uh, you also have a 50 liters. So yeah, I've just uh, picked up one of the, the plastic ones. So it's got the same coupling, so I'm just gonna basically just slide it in and twist. And I can just plug it in. Beautiful, so it's all plugged in. So there's a little switch button which basically turns on the, the compressor. So we're gonna turn it on. And it's just going to start the pressurizing the beer. basically uh, pretty much it. You'll have to wait once the beer pressurized, also once we plug the machine into the electricity. Uh, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes before it chills. And yeah, so we will wait a little bit. Uh, you can see in here there's also a small regulator which basically allows you to adjust the temperature. So you just turn it clockwise to the maximum position which is the coldest beer. And uh, that's very simple. Uh, the other thing see here, we do have a flow regulator, so you can fully close the flow or you, you can fully open the flow. It regulates the speed of the beer which is, which is coming into the glass and uh, you can basically adjust how much foam you want to get into the beer. Uh, we are selling European beers, so the foam is the sign that the beers are leaning. So it's not like that as most of the Australian beers which comes uh, dead flat. So the foam is natural thing. This unit can cool about 25 liters an hour, which basically means uh, 25 liters in the range of one hour. It doesn't mean that if you're gonna pour 10 liters of beer in the first five minutes, they're gonna get nice cold beer. It will be probably slightly warmer and it will be causing more foaming. So it's important to keep those intervals yeah, in, in one hour. So 25 liters, it's one basic almost one cake, it's just 30 liter. Yeah, it's uh, it would be yeah, it would be one keg, or one keg in one hour and ten minutes. If you get fifty liters, yeah, it would be a range of two hours, which is quite decent amount for a small small machine. Uh, one more thing would we want to check always when we get the machine. There's a little little rings you can see them here. Make sure that both of them are tight, because if not, it will be sucking the air through the seals and it will be dripping and bubbling the beer. So that's pretty much it is. I can take this little unit out because we have one connected in here. And always have a jack ready. Just uh, because we always, in each keg, there's a little bit more beer. So it's, it's not 30 liters, it could be 30.5. So we always try to pour it away. Also, I'm going to show you one thing. 
like this system it's filled with water because it's basically once we uh, receive the units we clean them back again and we fill the, the units with water to make sure that it stays nice and clean so we will pull all the beers all the water out and now you can see like when I I open the tap you can see how we can re regulate the flow it's going fast it's going slow so we always pull away like at least one jack away beautiful that one jack is away we'll pull it away all right guys I'm, I'm back here again so basically now the machine is fully working yeah, the beer should be already chilled inside it took about 10 minutes so yeah, it's, it's set up to the maximum coldness this is a uh, little regulator down here and I'll show you basically how to pull the beer this is that uh, flow regulator so you can adjust the flow so all the way up and if you close it so you will see probably in here will be easier when I open a tab the beer is really just dripping so you can adjust the flow this is really important when your beer is really foaming and uh, you just slightly close the regulator and adjust that, you know, adjust that flow which you can already reduce the foaming. So if, I'll show you when I, when I fully open it, this goes really fast. You can see now it shoot down. So yeah, so you can play with it, you can't, you can't really break it and uh, make, make sure that it's always tied in here. We go pulling the beer so you just basically open a tap and pull the beer into the glass it's nicely pouring in just remember again it's European beer the foam is the sign that the beer is a living thing not the dead so the foam should be there it's also it's got also the back position of the of the tap so when I turn it backwards it only creates foam so you can see the only foam is coming into the glass. If you like extra extra head on top of your beer, you can really nicely make it. So basically now we go to the disconnection. So when when your beer is basically is off, the beer is gonna start shooting. That means it's the sign that the beer is not on. So you can see it would be either shooting or now it just completely stopped. So there is no flow happening anymore. Cool. So what are we gonna do? We just switch the compressor off. We disconnect the keg, which is just a twist and out. Very simple. And we can disconnect the lines. Again, it, sh it works as a on a on a John desk, which is they use for the plumbing as well. So it's very simple how to disconnect. I'll show you a bit closer. You basically only you pull it in. And it's just it's secure it's inside when you need to pull it out there's a little brown ring you just press it inside and pull it out very simple I'll show you on this unit so basically you just squeeze it in and pull it out so still a little bit of air so make sure that always the keg is disconnected when you pull in the beer because if there's a lot of pressure inside the empty keg and it would just start shooting at you all you would get loads of the beer into your face so now it's all disconnected you can pack it back into the box and uh, and bring it back to the shop who will do the cleaning for the next customer uh, make sure that I always return that into that milk rack because the unit uh, is quite fragile so we don't want to uh, drop it down so in that milk rack is quite secure and it will be securely returned back to the, uh, back to the shop um, few more important things is uh, just you know uh, when, when, the, when the pipes are in I'll show you so they are in so make sure that you don't have them bent like that because it would start either sucking the air or leaking the beer so make sure that they always nice and straight that's one important thing all those things as I told you that one is tight and there's basically nothing else to do so yeah hope you'll have fun you'll have a good party guys enjoy our beers and i'll, I'll see you next time